Hello and welcome to another video on my channel on Ionic. Before starting, I would like to thank you all because we have just reached 500 subscribers. I want to thank you all for supporting my channel. And now let me tell you what we are going to do in this video. So in this video, we are going to implement Facebook login using Firebase in our Ionic application. So before we start, there are two ways that we can implement Facebook login using Firebase in our Ionic applications. The first one is the web browser way and the second one is the native way. In the web browser login, what happens when you try to log into your application using Facebook, an in-app web browser opens in your application and then the user enters their information on the login page and then hit login and once the login is successful, the control is brought back to your application. Now this is not the best way to do it, but this is one of the two ways that you can implement Facebook login. Another way is the native way in which whenever the user tries to log in using Facebook, the native Facebook mobile application is used for logging the user in to your application. So if a user is currently logged in in the Facebook application in that phone on which you are trying to run your application, the same user will be logged in to your application. So in this video, we are going to try out the first way, which is the web browser based login. And most probably in the next video, I'll cover the native login. So here I'm creating a new Ionic application which is called Firebase Facebook and before we get started with this Ionic application, we need to set up two things. The first thing that we need to set up is a Google Firebase project and the second thing that we need to set up is an application on Facebook. So head over to console.firebase.google.com and log in with your Google account and then click on add project. When you click on add project, you will have to enter the name of your project and hit create project. This will create a new Firebase project in your developers console. Okay, so our new project called Facebook login has been created in our Firebase console. So here we need to do a few things. The first thing that we'll have to do is head over to authentication, click on sign in method and here you'll have to enable Facebook and enabling Facebook requires you to enter an app ID and an app secret which you will get when you create a new application on Facebook. So let's do that. So head over to developers.facebook.com and to access this page you'll have to log in with your Facebook account. Click on this green button which will allow you to create a new Facebook application. Once you have done that you should see a page like this. Click on settings and on this page you'll see your app ID and your app secret. Your app secret will be visible only to you when you enter your password. So copy your app ID and your app secret from here and come back to your Firebase console and enter the app ID right here and your app secret right here. So I'll just do that. And now you can see that the Facebook sign-in provider is enabled, okay? Now from here, you'll have to copy this authorized domain, come back to Facebook and paste this right here in app domain section. So I'm just going to paste it here. Okay. And also type in the same thing right here in the website URL. If you do not see this box with the website title right here, make sure that you click on add platform and select website from here. You'll also have to select Android to add the Android platform. And here you'll have to type in the package name of your Ionic application, which is generally io.ionic.starter. You can find yours in the config.xml file in your Ionic project. So I think that we have created our project. And now I'll just open this project in Visual Studio Code. So our project is now open in Visual Studio Code. I'll head over to config.xml and you can see that the identifier of this project is io.ionic.starter. I'll just copy this, come back here and paste it right here. Okay, this is all the configuration that you require on Facebook developers website. Save all the changes and now you can close this tab. Now we will get started with working in our Ionic application. So let's open Visual Studio Code and the first thing that I'll do is install the Firebase module. So I'll just type in npm install Firebase dash dash save. This will install the Firebase module in our Ionic application. 
to initialize this Firebase module in our application, we will require some configuration which we can get from the Firebase console. So I'll just head over to the app folder and open app.module.ts file and right here I'll just import the Firebase module. So I'll just type in import Firebase from Firebase. Because the Firebase module has installed successfully, I can import this module and from this module I want to import the Firebase class. Okay. Now I'll write the code to initialize this Firebase class so that it gets connected to my Firebase project only. So I'll just type in Firebase dot initialize app and inside this function I'll have to provide options which I can get from the Firebase console. So head over to overview and here you can click on add Firebase to your web app and you can see that you get your config right here. So make sure that you copy this JSON object from here, come back to your Visual Studio code and paste that JSON object right inside your initialize app function like this. Okay. So this initialize app function takes in a JSON object with all this configuration about our application. Save it. Now you can close your app.module.ts file. Now in order to proceed, you'll have to install a few plugins into your Ionic application. So let's just do that real quick. So I'll just open this link which is firebase.google.com slash docs slash auth slash web slash Cordova and on this page you'll find all the instructions that you need to follow in order to implement authentication with Firebase. So here you can see we have the list of five plugins that we need to install. We will only be installing the first four because the fifth one is required by iOS and we are not going to build this application for iOS as of now. So I'll just install all these plugins one by one. Okay, so now we are done with the installation of all our plugins. Now I'll have to copy this configuration from here and I'll just go back to my application and open config.xml and right here after the author tag, I'll just paste it. In this configuration, I'll have to replace two things. The first one is the dynamic link domain and the second one is the auth domain. I can get both these things from the Firebase console. So I'll just go back to my Firebase console and I'll head over to the authentication section, click on sign in method and at the bottom, you'll see this URL, which is your auth domain. So just copy this come back to your application and replace auth domain with your actual auth domain. Save your application. Now we need to get the dynamic link domain. So head over to Firebase console again, click on dynamic links right here and it requires you to add an application first. So just click on Android. Here you'll have to add the package name of your Android application, which is io.ionic.starter and click on register app. Once this is done, you can close this. And now you can click on get started. Now, if you come back on this page, you will find this URL right here, which is your dynamic link domain. So just copy this, open Visual Studio code and replace dynamic link domain text with your actual dynamic link domain. Save it. And now the configuration of your Ionic application has completed. Now we can get started with the code. So now let's head over to our pages. And on the home page, I'm going to create a button which will be responsible for logging the user in. So I'll just create a button. Okay. Now I'll create this function in my home.ts file. Okay. Now we need to write the code to implement Facebook login. So let's import Firebase first. The first thing that I'll have to do is create a Facebook authentication provider, which I can then use to sign in. So there are a number of providers that you can use out of the box with Firebase. There is the Google auth provider, the Facebook auth provider, the email password auth provider. But in this video, we are going to use the Facebook auth provider only. This way we have created a Facebook auth provider and it is stored inside a local variable called provider. Now on this, I can call the function sign in with redirect. This takes in this provider as a parameter. So I'll just pass in that. Okay. And I can use the promise on this function. Now what this function will do, it will open the in-app browser in your application and will open the Facebook login page where the user can enter their credentials to login. Once they are successfully logged in, the control will be brought back to your application. 
and you need to get the data when the control gets back to your application. To get the data, you'll have to use another function which is called get redirect result which will get you the result which is generated as a result of user's login and here inside this promise you will get the result. Okay, this result object actually contains the information about the user that is currently logged in. So as of now what I'm going to do is just alert everything that I get and I'll stringify it using json.stringify and I'll just alert it. On this function, I can also use the catch function which will be called in case we run into an error and I'm just alerting the error as a string as well. So that is it. Now let's try and run this in an emulator. So I'll just type in ionic Cordova run Android. Hit enter and this will run the application in an emulator. Okay, so we are running into this error and I have noticed that Firebase module causes this error. So in order to get around this error, you'll have to type in npm install promise dash polyfill dash dash save exact. So this will install the promise polyfill node module which is I think required for Firebase to work. So this is a very small module and will install in like 5 seconds and once it's done we will again try to run our application on the emulator and I think it should succeed this time and should deploy the application on an Android emulator. So it has succeeded and now it's building the application for Android and I should see my emulator launching in just a few moments. There we go the emulator launches up and now let's wait for the emulator to boot up and then our application will be launched in the emulator. And there is our application with the login with Facebook button. I'm just gonna click on this button and you can see that an in-app browser has been launched and in just a few moments I'll see the Facebook login page. Now because I have tried this before I am already logged in to Facebook in the in-app browser so I am straight away logged in and I'm just getting an option to allow this application, the Ionic School application on Facebook to receive my email address. So I'm just gonna click on continue. If you are running this for the very first time, you should see the Facebook login screen and then once you log in, you will be brought to this screen that I'm seeing right here. I'll just click continue and this will bring me back to my application and will display the login information in an alert. And here you can see that I have got a lot of information as a result of Facebook login and this information particularly includes the user object which contains my UID, the display name, the photo URL and my email address as well. Apart from that, I have also got a token which I can use to make further requests to the Facebook Graph API to grab more data about this user from Facebook. So now that we have got this data, we can use this user object and we can also use this access token that we have received right here to get more information about this user or to perform actions on behalf of the user on Facebook. So this completes our Facebook login and if you head back to Firebase console, head over to authentication, in the users tab, you should see a new user created in your project. So this completes our Facebook login using the web browser method. Most probably in the next video, I'll cover the native method using the Facebook application, which I think is a better way for developers as well and for users as well. So I would like to thank you all once again for supporting my channel and, and I'm really happy about completing 500 subscribers and I'm looking to grow further. So thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.